All right, uh, 5.2, uh, section 5.2 deals with how moving water shapes the land. Um, this is these, this slide here, these slides have a lot of uh, content, so I didn't put my picture up there so you could actually stop and pause and get some of uh, the vocabulary down. But basically what we're saying here is that as water flows on our planet, it moves soil, it moves debris. Um, couple vocabulary words that we need to work on uh, a drainage basin well that's a large area of land that um, all the water in that area drains into that uh, into a stream system within that area uh, a divide uh, that is the point where water flows from one side or to the other uh, when it lands on the top of it uh, gravity and the slope of the land takes it either one way or the other there is a divide on both sides of a draining ba drainage basin, and I'll show you a picture of that in a little bit here. Um, Floodplains, uh, at the bottom of a, of a river system, the land usually flattens out, and right around the river, there's something called a floodplain on either side. Uh, it's water that naturally floods uh, if the water levels get too high. Uh, an alluvial fan, uh, that's usually the deposit of sediments at the bottom of the mountain um, as it as debris slides down, it kind of shapes out into a fan-looking shape, and I'll show a picture of that later, too. Um, deltas, uh, that's just when, as the river ends flowing and it drops its deposit, or it drops its sediment, it deposits its sediment at the mouth of the river, at the end of the river. Uh, it just kind of sets up this thing called a delta, and you guys probably talked about it in uh, social studies with the Nile, the Nile Delta. Uh, here's that Here's a picture of a divide. So this blue line right here um, shows a divide through the Rocky Mountains. So pretty much what happens here is anything, any liquid or rain precipitation that lands on the right of that line flows towards the Mississippi River. Everything to the left of that line flows towards either the Pacific Ocean or the Colorado River or it flows in this general direction. Here's that picture of an, an alluvial fan. Uh, you can see the, the debris came down and it just spread out into uh, to the bottom of the, the hill there and it kind of spread out into this little fan right here. Uh, this was an example of a delta kind of at the end. It, it's more braided river, but uh, it, it is a delta at the end where it just kind of spreads off. And all these little islands out here were just deposits dropped off. There is, there are, uh, a couple videos um, somewhere, this guy right here, um, on how uh, rivers as they flow, they meander and they create these oxbow lakes. Uh, that's not a really good one. This one's a good one right here. Um, we'll just sit back and listen. approaches the end of its journey towards its mouth, it usually flows over flatter land. It develops increasingly large bends, called meanders. Meanders constantly change their shape and position, sometimes creating steep cliffs, like these in the Mosul Valley, over a period of thousands and thousands of years. The water scours the banks and the river bottom. The faster it flows, the more material it carries. The speed of the water varies the in different parts of the river channel. Fast flowing water in this river is carrying mud, shingle, and debris. Where there is a bend in the river, it wears the outside bank away. Little by little, the water undercuts the bank. Falls in, cuts, falls in, cuts under, falls in. The slowest flowing part of the river is on the inside of the bend, the where the friction is highest. And this is where it deposits its load of mud and shingle, forming a bank. Over the years, it extends further and further into the river. Meanwhile, on the outside of the bend, the water continues to cut into the bank. The result is that the river bends more and more, meandering across the land. 
eventually they'll cut it off. Some of the world's most impressive meanders are in the Luangwa Valley, Zambia. And here, an even more dramatic feature, an oxbow lynx, can right result. There. The neck of the meander gets narrower and narrower, until, at a time of flood, the river cuts through the neck and shortens its course. The original meander gets blocked off by further deposits of material to leave a crescent-shaped oxbow lake. This meander became an oxbow lake, and within a few years, it had dried up. There you go. That's what it looks like now. <laughs> that was a good example uh, of showing that, but if you need to uh, go back and watch that one again, that was a good one. Uh, to watch, but that's how uh, meandering rivers are, happen and how oxbow lakes are formed. Uh, now here's again just kind of the step what water does from um, the time it falls to the time that it actually drops off at the end of the the uh, um, river. So let me straighten that out real fast. Basically just the highlighted words. Uh, I'm going to just read those to you so you can write them down too. But when rain falls, streams form. The streams then flow downhill through V-shaped valleys. At the bottom of the hill, the land flattens out and the streams usually get wide and they kind of take a curvier path. Um, once those curvy paths, that's where the meandering and the uh, oxbow lakes occur. Um, and once you get to the end of the river, uh, it forms a delta because the river doesn't can't hold that material anymore, that debris, the, the, the sediments, you can't carry it anymore, so it drops it off in a, in a delta at the end. Now, there are other ways that water can move things uh, underground. Acidic water from uh, chemicals in the rain clouds, we talk about chemical weathering, well, that sometimes lands on the ground, and it can uh, dissolve away limestone. Well, there are areas where there's limestone underground all over the place. Uh, well, that groundwater soaks through, it's got the, the weak acid in it, well, it'll wear away some of that limestone and carry it away, um, and it produces caves. Now, if these caves are formed underground, and, and somehow over time that the top of the cave, the roof of the cave becomes weakened, and it, it may fall in, and it can create this thing called a sinkhole. Now, I think I have um, some things lined up somewhere. right now. Maybe. All right. Um, when we were talking about cave formations with that uh, slightly acidic rainwater uh, wearing away limestone, uh, here's a video about the Carlsbad Caverns. Um, in 1883, just pay attention German to settlers in Carlsbad, New Mexico, discovered a cave system that turned out to be the largest and deepest in North America a place of extraordinary beauty. Slightly acidic water seeps through the ceilings of these vast limestone caverns. As each droplet falls into the cool chamber, it deposits a tiny veneer of limestone. So it just layers up and layers up and layers up. So the stalagmites and stalactites grow invisibly to us, but very rapidly indeed compared to most of the processes that shape the earth. Each year, thousands of visitors venture down to see for themselves these spectacular limestone creations. Now, if you look at that cave itself, at one point it was all full of limestone. Uh, over time, water that wore away that limestone and now these things that you see growing from the ceiling and from the ground, uh, those are groundwater that's dripping through the ceiling that has just a little bit of uh, limestone, dissolved limestone in it, and they just start rebuilding.
takes thousands of years for this stuff to, to form like this. So uh, when you do go on cave tours, they really tell you make sure you don't step off the path, make sure you don't touch anything, because even the oil and the high in the Sierra down. Mountains of California lies a valley treasured by many Americans and visitors from abroad, Yosemite National Park. And I'm going to stop right there. However, it's kind of cool stuff. Um, its famous landmark, Half Dome, half was dome. sliced by the power of a glacier which forced its way down the canyon. Glacier knocked that side of that mountain right off. <laughs> but I'm going to stop it. Today's well, meltwaters kind of cool. follow the same route. With the waterfalls, it's a really beautiful area. You can see the rocks that are smooth. That's the abrasion that we've been talking about. Uh, even in that water, there's 20,000 years ago, ice sediment filled this through. valley nearly to the top of Half Dome. So you can kind of see the meandering of the river, uh, the power of the waterfall. In place of those glaciers, giant waterfalls now leap down steep cliffs to reach the valley floor. Yosemite Falls drops nearly two and a half thousand feet, giving it the distinction of being the tallest in Half a mile it falls. We're going to stop there because it ended. Um, <laughs> so anyway, that's how kind of we're, we're looking at caves forming. And I know we went into Yo uh, Yosemite, but I thought that was pretty cool too. Um, sinkholes. Uh, this is where that cave falls in. Before I get to that though, if you look here, here's that V-shaped valley. This river right here, even though it's kind of small, has been wearing away this land. It used to be straight across. But over time, that little river has kind of worked its way through. Now, as far as sinkholes um, go, this is pretty scary stuff with sinkholes because you don't really know what's happening. And I think it's not that one. It's not that one. Well, maybe it is that one. I'm not sure, though. video that you're going to see here is a news broadcast. In Florida tonight, a whole neighborhood trying to figure out what to do next. A sinkhole is collapsing, growing bigger and deeper by the minute as families wonder how to save their homes. ABC's Junji Denise has that story. Outside, the sinkhole was growing by the minute, but inside, the Lambros family had no idea until they glanced through the window. We ran downstairs. How close that gets to our house. As we came out, it was the ground was just collapsing on itself. The backyard swallowed up, a sinkhole stretching 100 feet across, 50 feet deep, creeping dangerously close to their home. Go to bed thinking that, you know, you're not going to be moving out of your house the, the next morning. It happened so rapidly. Neighbors are moving too. It could get bigger. And if it gets bigger right where we're standing, it will be gone. Once the soil stabilizes, engineers can come in and start filling the hole with rocks and dirt. The problem is, it's still growing. We stayed at a safe distance, knowing sinkholes can be catastrophic. Nearby in Florida, a sinkhole devoured a road. This one in Texas swallowed up a tractor. In San Francisco, homes teetered on the edge. Sinkholes form when water weakens certain rock types beneath the ground. Eventually, the rock gives way and the land above caves in. Areas most susceptible to sinkholes have rock more prone to eroding in water. That's about 40% of the country. We're in that category. As for this home, it has already been deemed a total loss. So hopefully you can see, I mean, sinkholes uh, are dangerous. The, this picture here, it just shows the whole house, the driveway, everything, the garage, everything's falling in. Um, sinkholes can be quite dangerous. Uh, and that's it. So I uh, hope you learn a lot. If you want to go back and watch some of those videos, uh, that'd be helpful. I know this is a little bit longer than normal, but I think we're going to be done here for now.